Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline. My friends call me Jackie. <laughs> anyway, if this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if it's not, thank you for coming back. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing a movie review as the title already suggests. Without further ado, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's win. Let's go. So according to IMDb, um, it says that the movie Rasga is about when an international business merger is assigned to a rude and condescending senior executive. I thought he was a senior associate. Anyway, a curse that affects his ability to speak properly is cast on him by an office cleaner. So in a nutshell, that's what this movie is about. Um, the main character, Lassie Sielenu, um, his name was Tammy. He, he said that you shouldn't expect me to regard you if you can't express yourself properly I had questions upon questions when I was watching this movie but when I started watching the movie the first thing that jumped at me was that oh my god oh my god this is a thousand words I don't know if any of you have seen a thousand words it's a movie by Eddie Murphy and Kerry Washington it probably came out like five to seven years ago not sure but it kind of followed the same um, storyline I think if you haven't seen it maybe you should pause this video go on YouTube and watch the trailer just the trailer or don't go and watch the full movie before you finish this video so watch the trailer and then come back and complete this video so that's what the Raz guy reminded me of and it's okay people steal concepts or imitate I don't know clone <laughs> concepts all the time but it's just about doing your research and making it your own and that's what this movie kind of failed to do but overall it wasn't all bad it was a decent movie okay so the things that i didn't like the scene some of the scenes were too long especially the scenes that were supposed to be impactful like um when he went to the jazz man's place to look for a solution to his problem it was just too long and it was supposed to be funny but it wasn't um also when he went to the when he went back home after he realized you know at the office that he couldn't you know speak properly anymore yeah that that scene was too long and it just kept going and it just wasn't going anywhere and i just kept thinking can we just move it along please i also didn't like that the janitor was just a convenience um in this story I, his story did not add up why why was he so invested in ruining people's vocabulary or something who made him king of that but yeah what was his story also as a cleaner in an office in an office like that s-a-i-d-m-e um firm or something like that why why is it 8 30 in the morning and you're just you're just mopping you know and you happen to be there for when he reprimanded the first chick when he talked in a very condescending manner to his colleague you were you were just there like mopping the same spot and i know that they put some sort of wet floor caution sign there but still it doesn't take hundred years for you to to freaking mop <laughs> freaking mop you know a floor it does it doesn't also what was um Tammy's story why what was his background um why was it so important to him that people express themselves properly why was it important to him that they spoke good english um was it something about his past that he was running away from maybe from his family you know and why was it okay for him to accept his friend Dari who spoke pidgin the whole time um, and his sister who didn't really speak good English, you know, but he wouldn't extend the same grace to people outside. Do you know what I mean? Like what, what was it? Even when they showed us his mom, I thought that it was going to like he was living in the trenches somewhere, but the house wasn't all bad. They also didn't give the mom any speaking, um, any lines to, to, to speak, I think. Or she just said something like, hey, my son, you know, and that was it. Was it that she didn't speak good English? Was he ashamed of his family, of his background? We didn't know any of that. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I just feel like that that was important for us to to know to be able to like really get where he was coming from because if not he just seemed like a d word <laughs> yeah that was what that was what he seemed like also in the end i didn't like the fact that um being pay's car um being pay 
his sister when she got to the house as well she just remained in the car and then Lassisi had to go um to her car get in i mean that's their mom get out of the car come and say hello to your mom and then you know the whole kumbaya the proposal can then happen blah 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 it just seemed so unnatural like oh we really wanted to shoot this scene in the car blah 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 or even if she wasn't going to get out of the car it didn't seem natural that lassisi would go into the car he could have just gone to the you know to the driver's side of the car i think that would have been stronger you know even though we get it maybe he wanted to show her the ring but he could have done that like in a very covert manner you know by the door and that would have been a stronger performance or a stronger scene in my opinion the major issue that i had with this movie was that he said eloquent diction um was important to him why did he then have to be razzed i get that for the comedic aspect of the film they they needed him to be razzed because hey the name of the movie was the Raz guy right but they were just talking he always he didn't have a problem with people um being razzed he just had a problem with the way they spoke english because they were making grammatical errors can you just imagine a character like if temi was speaking all that terrible english but with his very composed like demeanor like it it would have been mad funny it would have been mad he would have killed it because even the audience we wouldn't be able to know how he was able to pull that off with a straight face and how everyone around him really kept a straight face while he was doing all of that you know what i mean so and the same note also goes to Butchie Franklin's character, the Egg Bay, huh? I'm sorry, Egg Bay <laughs> You know, um, why did he have to be posh when he started speaking the British English or something like that? Again, can you imagine if he was acting like an Egg Bay but he was speaking that kind of like British English? That would have been mad, but that was a missed opportunity. Like they really, they completely missed the mark. If the people that he was correcting were always picking their noses or just sitting anyhow you know it would have made more sense how his character then developed you know but there was none of that it was just their english and he decided to you know go that route with it and i was like huh no in the opening scene right he had a towel around his neck and i was like and but he was all dressed up so i'm like are you going to the office did you sleep in your work clothes or are you already dressed but you have a cold towel a wet towel like around your neck it just didn't make sense to me but then i know that it was because they wanted to as the scene moved along it was because they wanted to have that dramatic moment of nadine ringing the doorbell and him taking off the towel and throwing it at you know um shaggy's character diary i think diary you know and he's gonna do something with it however again they missed the mark on that and with that we're gonna jump into the continuity issues that I found with this movie. Let's go. <laughs> so when um Lassiseleno had the towel around his neck, yada yada yada, the door goes, the doorbell um goes off, he does this whole thing, you know, classic rom com movie, throws the um the towel at um Dari, Brother Shaggy's character, goes to the door, Dari uses it, you know, as a prop for his head as a pillow. They cut to the door, he um answers the door nadine is there god i hated nancy simmer's voice in this movie oh my god i was so frustrated i was like what the hell is this like who okayed this you know but anyway but by the time they cut back to brother shaggy he was using the towel as like a covered stuff you know like a bed sheet or something you know and i was like huh what was that what was that about the next thing is when Timmy came out of the room um, with his towel around his neck and we saw the, the living room, the, the books on the table were pushed forward, like they were closer to the TV. But then by the time they were doing Diary's close up, the books were closer to Diary. And I get why they do that. Sometimes they do that to make the shots interesting and to just break, you know, empty spaces. But then it just did not work because that just kept going back and forth and back and forth and it was kind of distracting to me so then he gets to the office and by the time he enters to go for the meeting it was 8 31 i think so while he was while he was still at the meeting um aisha came to him to tell him that he wanted um the boss wanted to see to see them so he left and then by the time they came out of the meeting obviously it was immediately it was 
past three, like maybe five minutes past three on his wristwatch. And I was like, what the hell? How did we go from 8.30 to past three? You know, so these are things that you really, really have to have to consider when you choose to put big wristwatches and expensive looking wristwatches and, you know, wall clocks in your movie. It's very, very important. All right. It's only if you say you want to establish the time at the beginning of the scene and you're not going to show it again, then fine, that works. But if you're going to keep going back and forth, it's, it's just not going to work. Do away with it, um, with the clock altogether. If you're not going to take, um, the time to keep changing, um, you know, the stuff, it's very, very important. I know that this might seem like nitpicking, but honestly, guys, when it comes to movie making, these things are very, very important. They are. Otherwise, they'll just be very distracting. You know, it's only they tell us that La Cielino had some sort of superpower that he was able to make time stop. And speaking of superpowers, what was that thing? You know, for, for every time that they did this to him, he kind of shuddered. Like, people do this to people all the time. And I've done it to people before, and I've never seen them do this. Like, ooh, something, ooh, something, something just hit them. I've never seen it happen, you know. But what was that? I think it was just too telling. Like, we knew that, ooh, something was going to happen soon. You know? Which then brings us to the last time when the guy was talking about it. Like, if someone snaps at you. The fact that he didn't even reference that, oh, two people snapped at me. He, it, you know? Because he shuddered, so he must have felt like people snapped at him, right? So, it just did not add up. And still sticking to the time he fell asleep in the office overnight. Um... He woke up, Aisha came to him, asked her what the time was, and she said 9.30, but according to his watch, it was like 10.15 or 11.15 or something like that. So again, but this could have been fixed if the editor was just, you know, paying attention because as at that time, when he put his hand to his face, the editor didn't need to use that shot. He could have used the shot where Aisha was actually saying the time, 9.30, you know, and then cut to him when he was done with his stretching and all of that. But the editor also, made the decision to use that take which i don't understand why he did that so another thing was when um temi went to the restaurant to see nadine for lunch but when he got there she was with her friends and he just let her be she was wearing a different outfit but a couple of hours later i'm guessing she went to his office but she had a totally different outfit on and her first line was you missed lunch and I'm like, how did you get time to go and change your outfits, to go and do all of that? Like, just didn't make sense to me. And then he had invited her over to the house much later in the night, which she wore the same outfits that she had on when she went to his office. So I thought that a stronger um, delivery would have been if she had the same outfit that she had on at the restaurant in his office and then had a different outfit on. For later in the night because she was going to be meeting his sister for the first time and that was supposed to be like a big thing right but i don't know who messed that up somewhere but yeah that was what we saw on our screens the next thing is um bucci's character bucci franklin the egg bay row um when we first saw him at the cashier point in the supermarket he had just one chain on one but by the time we saw him in the restaurant at the bar with um tammy he had like three chains on or something like that you know in the white shot but by the time they cut to his clothes up he had just one and i was like wait a minute what's going on here <laughs> like who who dropped the ball on this you know and speaking of which um the egg barrel again his tattoos were not consistent like in the first scene where we met him at the bar um he had this tattoo um on 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 his arm and it just didn't look the same the next time we saw him you know which we could then say that maybe that was a thing with the character like he just likes to look like a hard guy so he uses a marker to like draw tattoos on himself you know but then i i honestly i honestly honestly doubt that you know whichever way even if you want to look like menacing and all of that you put in you put in like an effort to make sure that your tattoos are symmetrical like every time you know or they look the same at least every single time and if it's something that he does every day he would have gotten the lines you know to be like equidistant and just i don't know it would have just been that would have 
there won't happen that much of a difference between the tattoo we saw on him when we first met him and then further down you know in the movie when he had regained his agbeiru speech so let's talk about the things that i actually liked okay i think my best scene was the opening scene where not the opening scene actually the scene at the office where he was talking to um his intern eve i thought she did so well that scene was so strong even the way they were like using the words it was really really interesting that was a very lovely scene i also liked the scene where um butchie franklin's character was speaking this phone and lassie was just looking at him like huh what the hell <laughs> i also really liked lassie when he was not trying to be funny when he was in his lawyer mode i thought i think lassie has super super duper great potential you know i i really really enjoyed his performance when he wasn't trying to be raz you know i really enjoyed it and there was just something very natural about him even in the end when he realized that he had gotten his speech back and the way it you could just you could just see how you know he was realizing like oh my god and then he's like oh my god oh my god that was so cool I really really liked his delivery on that i i bought it and i was happy for him like he took me on that journey as well you know i loved it i really liked the the way they shot the office scenes maybe the dp was different i'm not sure but the camera work was really good it just helps to move the story along as well i really really liked it i also liked how they established that um bing Pei likes to take lassie's drink you know i like that they didn't shove it in our faces even though they kind of tried to like the first time she did it you know i think even without him saying you haven't changed you haven't changed we would have gotten it like oh you know and even i could relate because i do it with my brother all the time and he hates it you know so we would have gotten it once he did it once she did it once she did it second time done we get it sometimes the audience like a lot of times actually the audience we're not stupid you know so we see these things and we get it you don't have to like you know you can show us don't tell us basically so the performances that really stood out to me this shaliwa ashafai girl i don't know her from anywhere just a couple of days before i watched the movie my friend and i were talking on the phone and he asked me if i knew who she was and i said no i don't because i was asking him so who are your favorite you know nigerian actors like female actors and he said he said her name and i was like who's that and he was like oh she was on ajachi i'm like yeah i don't know her <laughs> So when I saw her, I was, she was so good in the in, in that scene that I'm talking about, and even in the other scenes that she appeared in. So I was like, wait, oh, who is this girl? I'd never seen her before. I went to the end credits to see what her name was, and I went back to continue watching the movie. And I said, okay, I see why. I see why he said that she is one of his faves because she was really really good in it. I thought Lassie C again, like I said, when he wasn't speaking. Uh, when he wasn't when he wasn't acting raz i thought he was really good he was really strong um of course ibrahim suleiman is an actor that i really really like so much you know his role was not big again there are no small roles only small actors you know once you have one line and you're able to like drive it home you know deliver it in a very impactful manner it's usually it's usually like magic you know in 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 the audience's eyes so i really liked his performance as well the doctor was a natural i think he did what he was supposed to do but chief franklin also he was quite good um i just again i just didn't like how they asked them to interpret their roles i felt like it could have been stronger if they hadn't had a change of attitude and just their manner of speaking changed um i also liked aisha that's the hijab wearing girl and i thought that was kind of that was really good the makeup um how they were able to get the detail of you know her forehead that she prays that was a very nice attention to detail that they gave and i i liked it so overall this movie is not bad i just feel like there are a couple of things that they could have um done differently that would have really you know elevated um their performances and just the overall outcome of the movie but at the end of the day i want to commend the people that worked on this movie they did a very good job and you can tell that they didn't have a lot to spend but they still were able to create something really nice it could have just been better just like every other thing else everything can always be better but yeah 
that's the end of this movie review guys i hope it wasn't too long because i just had so much to say but if you haven't seen this movie it's on netflix go support nollywood go and watch the movie but if you have seen it let me know what you think about the movie and have you seen a thousand words what do you think did it remind you of a thousand words or was i just off on that one but yeah thank you so much for watching guys and don't forget to like share subscribe and leave your comments in the comment section down below i'll be more than happy to hear from you until i see you next time bye